The Greedy Triangle, written by Marilyn Burns, illustrated by Gordon Silvera. Once there was a triangle that was, as most triangles are, always busy. The triangle spent its time holding up roofs, supporting bridges, making music in a symphony orchestra, catching the wind for sailboats, having slices of pie and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. The triangle's favorite thing, however, was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the best news, it said, which I can tell my friends. The triangle's friends liked hearing the news. One day, the triangle began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the triangle went to see the local shapeshifter. How may I help you? The shape shapeshifter asked the triangle. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the triangle, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof, the shapeshifter turned the triangle into a quadrilateral. Life changed in a wonderful way. The quadrilateral was happy with all the new things it could do. The quadrilateral could be a baseball diamond or first, second, or third base. It could take a position on a checkerboard, checkerboard or a chessboard. It could be a television screen, a computer screen, or a movie screen. It could frame windows or frame pictures, and much, much more. The quadrilateral's favorite thing, however, was to be the pages of a book. I learned so many interesting stories that way, it said, which I can tell my friends. But one day, the quadrilateral began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the quadrilateral went back to the shapeshifter. How may I help you now? The shapeshifter asked the quadrilateral. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the quadrilateral, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the quadrilateral into a pentagon. Life changed in a wonderful way. The Pentagon was happy with all the new things it could do. On a baseball diamond, the Pentagon could be home plate. It could be a section on a soccer ball or appear inside whenever someone drew a five-pointed star. The Pentagon's favorite thing, however, was to be the headquarters of the United States military near Washington, D.C. I hear all the top secrets that way, it said. It's too bad I can't tell them to my friends. The Pentagon's friends couldn't help feeling left out. After a while, it seemed to pass slowly for the Pentagon and it became dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the Pentagon went back to the shapeshifter. So you're here again, the shapeshifter said to the Pentagon. Now, what would you like? I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, 
they said, the Pentagon said, my life would be more interesting. Well, that's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the Pentagon into a hexagon. The hexagon Life changed again in a wonderful way. The hexagon was happy with all the things it could do. The hexagon fit in as floor tiles in houses and patios and fancy crackers at parties and picnics. It worked as the socket of certain bolts and the prongs of certain wrenches. The hexagon's favorite thing, however, was to be a cell in a beehive. I love watching the bees as they buzz in and out, it said. The hexagon spent so much time in the beehive, it was too busy to talk to its friends. The friends missed the hexagon and couldn't help feeling ignored. Again and again, the shape became restless, dissatisfied and unhappy with its life. Again and again, it returned to the shapeshifter for more sides and more angles. The shapeshifter agreed to turn it into one shape after another. A heptagon, an octagon, a nonagon, a decagon, and on and on. Finally, the shape had many, many sides and many, many angles. Its sides were too small or so small that it had trouble keeping its balance. Its friends couldn't tell which side it was on and began to avoid the shape. One day when the shape was going down a hill, it began to roll faster and faster. It went screeching around corners, crashing into fences and trees, colliding with bicycles and terrifying walkers. At last, the shape came to a stop. It felt tired and dizzy, lonely and sad. Enough, thought the shape. I don't know which side is up. I can't keep my balance. My friends don't want me around. The shape could no longer remember why it had been so unhappy as a triangle. Very carefully, it made its way back to the shapeshifter. Aren't you happy yet? The shapeshifter asked. I want to be a triangle again, said the shape. I'm not surprised, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the shape back into a triangle. The triangle was delighted to have its old shape back again and keep itself very busy. Once again, it held up roofs, supported bridges, made music in a symphony orchestra, caught the wind for sailboats, became slices of pies and halves of sandwiches and much, much more. Still, the triangle's favorite thing was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news it said, which I can tell my friends. Its friends liked hearing the news and were glad the triangle was back in shape again. Why do you think the triangle was greedy? What did the triangle do when he wanted to change? Who did he go to? Who did he talk to? Did the triangle find ways to be useful as each shape? He sure did. He found lots of places that he would fit. What shape names do you remember from the book? I remember the pentagon and I remember the hexagon. How was the triangle getting more sides and more angles? Who was he getting it from? The shapeshifter. What would have happened? If the shapeshifter had said no, do you think he would still be dissatisfied? 
Is there a way a triangle can change how it looks without adding any new sides or angles? Talk to your learning coach about that one.